Hi, this video will explain how to initially set up Packet Trap and discover devices on your network from within the studio. At the studio sign in screen, the admin and password will always be admin lowercase and password all lowercase. At this point on, we're going to click on the sign in button to get us to the let's get started screen. The administrative user email that you're going to enter in at first is crucial because it's going to be the email that's responsible for the notifications that are going to be sent out from Packet Trap. So I'm going to go ahead and put an email address in here and move on to step two where we're going to configure our SMTP server settings. This is very critical to ensure that you get notifications from Packet Trap when issues arise on your network. You're going to want to enter in, in from email address, a valid SMTP server, and a port. If you do need to change the port information, this is where you're going to want to do that here. And you also have an option here to send a test message to the email address that you'd like to use to verify the settings are correct. In the event that your Exchange server does go down, we do have a failover to monitoring SMTP server option here so that it will route through one of our servers to still send you notifications back to that email address. At this point, we're going to go ahead and click on, I'll fill this out later and proceed forth. The third step is to run a network discovery. This is where Packet Trap will scan the network to detect other devices. So if we click on next, we're going to want to enter in the IP address range for your network. Packet Trap should automatically recognize what IP address subnet or range the host server resides on so you should just be able to put in a few numbers and have it recognize them right away and for testing purposes we're gonna do a discovery on a range of 10 IPs the network discovery techniques lets you know what's going to be used to discover devices you can see those here and we also have a credential section where it's going to be looking to apply credentials to devices to make sure that we get data. We're going to go ahead and click on next. And as you can see here, it's starting the ping response and going to relay any data that's being sent back from those devices into the studio as well. As you can see here, it's returned DNS information for the devices. It also will let us know if SNMP is responding and what the role is within the platform or on your network and any other information that it can re relay as well. At this point on, we're going to go ahead and click on next. And you can see here that we have out of the box smart policies, which will, it will assign devices to provided it can de detect what type of device it is. So you can see here, we've got Three in the networking policy could be Cisco routers, HP, SonicWall, those types of devices. We have three in the server policy, which would distinguish between an exchange server, SQL server, etc. And default policy is where it cannot detect what type of device it is, so it throws it into this policy until we specify where we want it to reside. At this point on, we're going to click on finish, and we should see the devices up. At this point on, there's two things that we really need to verify to make sure that we're getting data back from the systems. The first one is to make sure that we have the correct credentials assigned to the devices. So if I go and I select all of these other devices that I've discovered in the studio, and I go to set credentials, and I go to public, and apply, any of these systems that actually have public credentials that are set correctly will automatically start to relay data as in memory, CPU, and other types of information. Now that Packet Trap has discovered the devices, you might want to go into the default policy to reassign these devices into the appropriate policies. For instance, this could be a DNS or domain name server controller and I want this in the server policy. So if I go to 
reassign policy and go into the server policy, click OK. It's going to go ahead and move that device back into the server policy now so that it has the appropriate monitoring preferences that I'm looking for. If we go back to our devices view, where we see all of our devices, this is the base view for the whole system. So you can see here in about three minutes, Packetrap automatically detected the devices on your network and immediately started monitoring them. From here, you can modify the policies or monitoring preferences, or you could simply go to the devices view, right click on any of the policies and choose edit, which will take you to these options where you can choose monitoring frequency intervals, as well as the alerting framework, which we can get into in a separate video. I hope this was helpful and thanks a lot. Bye-bye.